the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. Well, welcome to episode 227. Today's title is Sheriff versus Lawyer or Liberal versus Leftist. Now, we've deviated from the regular schedule program and we brought this episode to Radio Cop Podcast today because of its importance. It is a developing story in Los Angeles and it really is the battleground of today's political cycle in America. It's what I have always been saying since the beginning of a lot of this turmoil as the communists started shoving their way into the White House. And I've always said that the liberals, at one point or another, would start standing up to the bully in the room, which are the leftists. Now, for those that are listening and don't know the difference between a liberal and a leftist, they are profound differences. The liberals believe in equal justice. The liberals believe in saving the Tichy fly. But the liberals also believe in a capital system that produces money. And that money, of course, should be given to the needy. Leftists believe in controlling the means of production, anything that the government can get its hands on, including its people. Control, control, control is the leftist mindset. So there's a difference in between both of them. And we are seeing within Los Angeles, specifically the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department versus the L.A. District Attorney. And it is the battle between liberal and leftist. And we're going to cover it today. So how do you get in contact with us? Real easy. Radacop.com. You can hear all our podcasts from 1 to 227. Radacopnation.com. Our official website. You can get more information about us and upcoming shows. And, of course, you can hear this podcast wherever you get your podcast. We're on social media. Look us up, Raider Cop, Raider Cop Nation, or Raider Cop Podcast. You will find us. And lastly, of course, we are up for upgrading our website. We've been kind of falling behind on a lot of things that we're going to do to it, but we're going to start organizing it in specific sections, and we'll get more on that as we go on during the summer to navigate a little bit easier, as well as social media is going to be some hiccups there that we are going to remove ourselves from. Um, because uh, a lot of the new social media just isn't cutting the mustard. But we haven't made those decisions just yet, but we will. Now, you know the lineup. We're going to do Living in the Bolshevik States of Woke. Today, we also have four stories instead of three. And that's followed up by the joke of the week, the word of the week, and then we get into episode 227, Sheriff versus Lawyer or Liberal versus Leftist on today's show. Now, it's time for our commie friends. The Soviet Union will be pleased to offer amnesty to your wayward was. The Soviet Union? I thought you guys broke up. Yes, that's what we wanted you to think. <laughs> Oh, 
Our first story takes us to Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, which has authorized the flying of the BLM flag as well as the pride flag over all embassies. Now, you may say, well, that's old news. And partly it is. But now there's a Republican that has placed uh, on the agenda a bill to only fly the American flag at every embassy. So all of a sudden, the state attorney, and then the state attorney, excuse me, the secretary of state has turned around and said, well, I'm authorizing it. So we got a little tit for tat going on over there. As again, America is the laughing stock of the world. Our second story, Camilla, uh, as you know, she hasn't gone down to the border yet. She's been walking around with egg horn on her face that whole incident. And now she's going to make up for it. Of course, she on Sunday, she walked in the Pride Parade. She got points for that. She's going to get some more points because she invited 24 senator, women senators to her house for dinner. 16 Democrats and 8 Republicans. That's it. She's off the hook again. Boy, Camilla, she's good. And our third story takes us to Dems learn hard truth about capital breach. This one I want to take the liberty on reading to you the the article. And it is an article of Jan- oh, January, <laughs> June 15th, so it is relatively fresh. FBI Director Christopher Wray punched a sizable hole in the Democrats' narrative about the January 6th breach of the U.S. Capitol complex. He reminded the Democrats that the event was nothing like the horror of 9-11. He taught them that the words insurrection has a precise legal meaning and that he can't use the term in the same way that the Democrats hugged the word. He also noted that there were three groups at the Capitol that day and not all of them were committing violent crimes. Oh, mind-boggling. Since January 6, 2021, most Americans move on their uh, moved on with their lives trying to deal with the new founded inflation, open borders, schools that are still closed, and an economy that is underperforming. Riding in Portland on a nightly basis and the desires to move past the pandemic and return to normalcy. While Americans are more concerned with violence in their neighborhoods, especially if they live in a Democrat-controlled city trying to defund the police, the leftist in Congress wants to focus on the violence at the Capitol that occurred on January 6th. Because the Biden administration and its co-conspirator in Congress, the Democrats have no policy ideas that will get America back to work, secure our borders, and acknowledge the greatness of freedom in America. They can, they still want to attack anything that can tenaciously associate with President Trump. In their minds, President Trump is still the president. His policies were successful while theirs have been such dismal failures that they want to focus on division. So they continue to hyperbolize the January 6th incident. Republicans have been consistent in denouncing violence of any kind, much like Director Ray did in his testimony. We do not minimize in any way what happened in the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. Nearly 500 people have been arrested and are being prosecuted. Everything from misdemeanors, 
pathetic. Trespass to more serious conspiracy charges. So here you have the Democrats beating the drum on something there's nothing to beat the drum about. Total crickets on the 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 summer of love 2020 as BLM and, and Antifa burnt every Democratic major city in America. Nothing said about that. And they're crying about 500 people. They got arrested. And here's the director of the FBI telling uh, Congress in his testimony, not everybody that, that was in there that got arrested was actually committing a serious crime. Now, there is footage of police officers from the Capitol telling them people and encouraging people, come on in, come on, just go up the stairs. So that's going to be a tough misdemeanor felony caper to prove. What are you going to do? This is what they come up with. They call this news, just like uh, Camilla's dinner party. All right, and uh, lastly, L.A. County Democratic Party calls on Villanueva. That's the sheriff from Los Angeles to quit. Now, what's what what is mind-boggling about that is that Sheriff Villanueva is a Democrat. They are turning on their own. Hmm. What could be the little dirty secret that's going on? Maybe Mario Cuomo knows. Who knows? But we're going to look at that and much more. So, you know what I always tell you guys. After this dismal report on the news, it's time to hear the joke of the week. So here we go. My wife has evil lessons with Satan every week. I don't know how much she charges. A little bit of humor on the podcast. I don't want you to be that depressed hearing I don't know if it's the joke or the news, which one's worse, but I'm trying to help out. That's what I'm trying to do. Now, before we turn to the word of the week, I'm actually struggling here with my co-host, Milo the dog. He's fighting for elbow room underneath the desk. This is amazing. I'm having back and forth with the dog now. So um, let's go to the word of the week. From the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8, and it says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. As always, you can hear more on AWOL Monday. We have them, these programs on AWOL Monday, maybe two, three times a month on a Sunday. And um, you can listen to things like what I just read. I'll explain it more in depth, less than 30 minutes of your time for your spiritual growth. Episode 227, that's what you're listening to. And today, our special broadcast podcast is about the sheriff versus the lawyer or liberal versus leftist, the battle that has emerged in L.A. It is a mini battle basically facing the nation. What happens here may happen to the nation. So it's time to get the short bus and the clowns. Episode 227. Gentlemen, boys and girls, children of 
episode 227, Sheriff versus Lawyer or Liberal versus Leftist. It is very interesting what has happened in Los Angeles County where the district attorney has gone completely commie and the liberal sheriff of Los Angeles has stood up, stood his ground, and is fighting back. So who are the opponents? Well, in our right corner, standing at uh, 58 years of age, Sheriff Alex Villanueva is described as being born in Chicago, Illinois. He is serving currently as the 33rd Sheriff of the County of Los Angeles, California. And he is also a Democrat. When he ran, he ran on a progressive type of ticket. We could talk a little bit more about him in his early life. Villanueva, again born 1963 in Chicago to a Puerto Rican father and a Polish-American mother. He moved to Rochester, New York at an early age where Villanueva was, when he was nine years old, his family moved to Puerto Rico. And there, uh, he had to basically start learning school now in Spanish. Uh, It goes on to say that uh, he learned to walk to school, read books, and and by the side of the road next to the sugar cane fields. He earned an associate's degree in liberal arts from St. Father Paradino Valley College in 1986 and a bachelor's of liberal studies from the University of the State of New York. So, as you can see, oh, and then, well, when I finished, and a master's in public administration from the, from a college, uh, a California State University, and a doctrine of public administration from ULV. So, as you can see, Sheriff Villanueva is very astute and educated. He started his career, uh, well, he served in the military for 10 years in the United States Air Force and the California Air National Guard from 83 to 85. Then he goes on to uh, serve in the California Army National Guard as well, 85 to 92. And he served in the 2nd Battalion, 144th Field Artillery Regiment, 40th Infantry Division. After that, in 1986, he joined the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office and graduated for the Sheriff's Academy Class 232 and was assigned to the Inmate uh, Reception Center and part of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office in the jail system in 1988. He, um, made, he, he was vital in an initiative to drive out uh, smoking in jails or ban of smoking in the Los Los Angeles County jail system. Now, I remember this uh, specifically back in uh, 1989 at the jail system in Miami. They were removing cigarette smoking from that jail and the pilot was from Los Angeles County. So very interesting that Sheriff Villanueva was very uh, instrumental in getting that program done in Los Angeles, which it took off all over the country right after that. So kudos to him for that because he saved a lot of people from secondhand smoking. So that was very good. And uh, it ran for Sheriff in... uh, this last election, and of course he went, he won uh, against the incumbent, and that also gave him some uh, records there that no uh, sheriff uh, had lost. A sitting sheriff has never lost in a hundred and something years, so kudos for that one as well. 
And he's the first Democrat in over 100 years in Los Angeles uh, County as well. They've always had for over 100 years a Republican sheriff. So when Sheriff Alex Villanueva hit the circuit in Los Angeles, I reserved my comment. I did mention him in several podcasts about him taking over, about him having a progressive platform. And I said I would fall short of calling him a political hack, mostly because I did not know who he was. But I also made the statement, we need to keep an eye on him. Well, I have. And I'm glad I reserved my comments because Sarah Villanueva is turning into quite the hero. Now, let's look at our left corner. In our left corner, standing at a measly, whatever he's standing, we've got George Garçon. And uh, born March 12, 1954, an American attorney who is a district attorney of Los Angeles. Now, I'm going to read his bio, and I was a little surprised by it. One place of birth surprised me, and his prior profession before becoming district attorney surprised me as well, considering his current platform. It doesn't make any sense. Gasson previously served as the district attorney of San Francisco from 2011 to 2019 and assistant chief of police for the Los Angeles Police Department and chief of police in Mesa, Arizona and San Francisco. Gasson was born in Havana, Cuba. So none of this is making any sense. His family immigrated from Cuba in 1967, and they settled in California. Not the norm for a lot of Cubans. So that's a little strange. Young George would uh, join the United States Army at the tender age of 18 and become a sergeant during that career, earning a Bachelor's of Arts in History from California State, Long Beach, and then he would go on to join the Los Angeles Police Department as a patrol officer. He only stayed a short time. He would leave. He'd go to private business. And I guess he got tired of that and eventually ends up back in the Los Angeles Police Department. He would attain the rank of assistant police chief in Los Angeles PD under Chief William Bratton. Uh, in 06, Garçon would appoint, was appointed chief of police of Mesa, Arizona Police Department. And uh, in 09, the mayor, Gavin, soon to get kicked out as California Governor Newsom, was the mayor of San Francisco at the time. He appointed Garçon chief of police in 09 in San Francisco. And it goes on, and in 2011, after Camilla Harris was elected California Attorney General, Newsom appointed Gasson to be the San Francisco District Attorney in 2019. So a lot of these things just don't make any sense. And here's here's a guy that's almost turned complete commie. All he needs is the Che in his middle name, so we can call him George Che Gasson, and the Green Beret. He was born in Cuba, his family flees Cuba, but I want you to stay keeping an emphasis on the year that his family left Cuba, 1967, almost eight years after Fidel had taken eight or nine years that Fidel had taken control of Cuba. So I had an uncle of mine that he was quite the character, my father's brother, and he would go on when 
you would meet certain Cubans in Miami, the community, in the public domain. He would kind of interrupt them when they were talking. And my uncle would always say, whoa, 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 whoa. When did you come? When did you come to this country? And then the guy would answer. And if the calculation was like many years after Fidel, he would always say to them, boy, sure did take you a long time to come here. Which he basically was saying, you kind of were comfortable in the communist regime, weren't you? So we have the Garcon family coming here in 67, and then they settled in California, which that wasn't the norm either. Most Cubans would settle in Miami, in New Jersey, New York, those kind of areas. Now, it's not to say that some didn't go to California. I know one or two of them, too. Uh, I would say out of the two that I know went to Cal, one is a communist. So, okay, two communists and one that's a possible. So, obviously, their families flocked to California for the land of opportunity, but mm, wasn't the real norm. And then he gets into police work, goes up the ranks. Now, one of the things that he was doing in police work for Los Angeles specifically, he had a of time in his career that he was in charge of the, he was the training commander in the year 2000, and he was regarded by the Justice Department as being uh, innovator in changing the fundamental way LAPD got, uh, was getting taught civil rights in the department. So there's no doubt to me that George Che Song here has been indoctrinated as a political hack from early on. And um, he slowly got groomed and quickly rose up the ranks. Eventually, of course, he becomes an attorney and uh, leaves police work and dives into the district attorney realm. Some of his platforms have been bail reform. We know that that's a complete, utter disgrace. And uh, drug policies, you know, they're a little too harsh. And He's all for the Marijuana Act and everything else. And, we, you know, all these people that got charged with these stiff penalties and so forth in the past. Okay, I'm not going to put that one too far away from him because I think it was a little bit ridiculous too. Some people charged with possession of large quantities of marijuana get 30 years and then you got some of these crook politicians getting six months probation. You know, so it's not very fair. So I'm not going to hold him too much on that. But he's had a controversial past all along. Um, he also was at one point charged, or oh, filed a civil charge, a oh, civil complaint against the Uber driver, alleging that the company failed to protect the driver from sexual, from a, a sex offender and other people who had been convicted of serious felonies. So, Garçon files a civil complaint against Uber. So Uber's the bad guy. So every, pretty much everything he's doing to this point is a far leftist position. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes, when Garçon ran for district attorney of Los Angeles, his opponent was a woman by the name of Jackie Lacey, which is an African-American she got the endorsement from every police association or group all over the state of Florida. I mean, excuse me, the state of California. And uh, she got a lot of money from the uh, uh, Los Angeles Sheriff's Division uh, Association, $1.3 million. California Cor uh, Correctional Peace Officers, $1 million. 
L.A. Police uh, Protection League, $1 million. Uh, Peace Officers of Research of California, $725,000. L.A.C. Professional Peace Officers, $386,000. San Francisco Police Association, one hundred and ten. dollars California State FOP, $100,000. California, California uh, Highway Patrol Association, I believe it is, $75,000. San Jose Police Association, $65,000. Long Beach Police Officers Association, $51,000. They gave a lot of money to this woman. Here's Garcon, okay? Oh, she ends up with uh, $7 million in contributions. Now, here's George. George Che Garçon got $12.4 million in contribution. His biggest donor, are we ready? George Soros, $2.2 million. And, of course, he was masqueraded under an organization called the Open Society Foundation, which, of course, is a puppet foundation for George Soros. Another contributor was Netflix, the CEO, Red Hastings, 500000 And we know that Mr. Hastings has hired the Obamas over at Netflix. They're doing wonderful stuff over there. What is it, kitty porn or whatever they're doing at Netflix with the little cheerleaders and they get rid of it and all that? Great job they're doing over there. So there is no doubt that George Che Garçon is a political hack in training since early on and the sheriff Sheriff Villanueva which also had his upside battles trying to defeat the current sheriff the, the, I'm not the current but the past sheriff of which was a Republican and he had to knock down that wall to get in there <coughs> but he is a liberal stood on a, a liberal platform, a progressive platform, and as we said, he got in. One of the acts that he did as sheriff was to remove ICE from the jails of Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, as controversial as that is, we're not going to get into that. Other uh, chiefs of police have stood by that ground too, saying that it has to do with trust in the community and that having the ability to arrest and deport illegals takes away that trust system from the community and policing, blah, blah, blah. Very somewhat true, but far-fetched and overreached on some of these hacks that constantly say the same thing. You know, they're still illegals, but we can't bend over backwards to protect them. But anyway, that was Sheriff Villanueva's position, and he did that when he got, when he got in. Um, but the love fest has gone away in recent months with uh, George Che Garçon's positions on releasing people, not prosecuting certain crimes. Now, this podcast we're really dedicating to Officer Jose Diaz, excuse me, Juan Diaz from the LAPD. He was shot and killed on July of 2019 in off-duty capacity. But what's astonishing about him, and I told you that Gasong was a former LAPD officer of many years, he chose to not give the person arrested the death penalty. And as such, of course, the family of Officer Diaz have kind of really gone on a campaign against Dawson's position. So a lot of radical stuff uh, from Dawson, we in Florida had one district attorney or state attorney, as they call them in Florida, that when they had the big massacre and all 
Orlando in the gay club several years ago. Uh, the governor was, you know, of course, seeking the death penalty on that crime. I believe 49 people died. And it was a horrible massacre. But the state attorney at the time, which was another political hack, uh, paid and uh, sealed and delivered by the George Soros Foundation, decided not to give him the person the death penalty. And uh, the governor was so pissed off that he moved the venue for that case to another county in Florida. That district attorney uh, sued in, in uh, state court, it went all the way, I believe, to the Supreme Court of Florida, and they basically went, the governor can do whatever he wants. And that was the end of her. And she's gone now. The citizens of Orlando put her a boot in her behind and got rid of her. But George Soros dollars have created this mess all over the country. So lately, the sheriff of Los Angeles has seen himself in a position now to go up against a leftist position. Now, it's not so crazy because Californians are getting fed up with this leftist mentality, like the governor. And I don't know. Have they gotten rid of him yet? How long is it going to take to get rid of him? How many? Are we counted already? They've been counting and counting over there on the, on the get rid of uh, Governor Newsom campaign because Californians are really pissed off. You know, on this podcast, we look at statistics, we look at and analyzed information from our podcast, and one of the things that we notice in the states where they're coming from, there's a lot of people in California like to hear us, and I think because they're like uh, hostages, you know, they've been taken hostage by these lunatics for 40, 30, 40 years, and um, they're fed up. And they're not going to take it anymore. And they're doing everything they can. So I believe there's a contingency that is supporting Sheriff Villanueva. Now, as a result to what everything that I've said, homicides have increased up to 92% from 36%. That's high. And all crimes in Los Angeles have gone up. With defund the police, the numbers of that uh, the sheriff was defunded was in the hundreds of about 120 million. I don't have the number, the exact number in front of me, but the numbers were uh, that I I read in an article were quite horrible. So I believe that Sheriff Villanueva is first year in. They knocked off. Uh, not his first year, excuse me. In 2020, they knocked off about 128 million, I believe it was. And this year, uh, they're up there in the 100 million uh, percentile as well. Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, which has 18,000 employees, is nothing to sneeze at. And as a result, uh, the Board of Supervisors, the County Commissioners of Los Angeles that fund the Los Angeles Sheriffs, and they're on the defunding binge. And ever since that's gone up, the defund cause, in, it's caused also the crime rate to escalate as well. So we have a duty of oath. Both the sheriff took a duty, uh, swore a duty to his oath, and Song here has taken an oath. So when we look at malfeasance and nonfeasance, we have to wonder who is more guilty of this. Now, for the less studious, I'll read a little bit what is malfeasance. 
which is the wrongful, it is a wrongful or criminal act perpetrated by a public official or other person of authority. An act of malfeasance is done intentionally, disregarding the fact that the action is morally or legally wrong and will cause someone harm. Now, some of this nonsense of just releasing uh, people from custody is one of those things that you have to wonder. Uh, rioters that actually did physical violence being having their charges completely dropped is, is that regarded as malfeasance. People did get hurt and they got no justice. Nonfeasance is the failure to do something that one is legally responsible to do. Nonfeasance is an intentional failure to live up to one's legal or moral duty in a given situation, a refusal to fulfill one's obligations. So, God's song is not really meeting the expectation of district attorney in prosecuting the criminals. He's openly said he's not going to prosecute certain laws, and he's stated them. Of course, most of them misdemeanors. But who gave Garçon the right to do that? Obviously, he was elected, but the laws are the law of the, of, of the state of California, the law of the land. But he's decided not to enforce it. So malfeasance and nonfeasance, if we look at both our competitors here, Sheriff Alex Villanueva versus George Che Garçon, I think that George here fits the bills on both and not Villanueva. Now, uh, let's be a little bit fair on the sheriff. There is a big leftist conspiracy <coughs> that there's gangs in the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department and that the sheriff is covering it up. Well, look, that's also on the same playing field as UFOs. You know that? They're real. The government's going to announce something. You never know. Green men with antennas. It's incredible. So, God's song wins the malfeasance, nonfeasance around accountability. Both of them have the accountability to the public of Los Angeles County. God's song has probably depressed the majority of Los Angeles residents with his constant whining and refusing to put bad people behind bars. Sheriff Villanueva recently has taken a position to start going out on the beach and on Venice Beach and caring for the homeless which are in huge numbers nowadays. And as a result of that incident that's going on. That's our second show that we've got coming up in a couple, in about three days. That show, we're going to discuss as well the issue that's going on in California and Venice Beach. You know, the homeless issue has always been a problem in like LA in Skid, Skid Row. But how did it get to the beach? And how did it get so far out of hand where it's affecting businesses, people, safety? You know, it's just horrendous what's happening. And because of the lack of the city of Los Angeles to act or do anything, the sheriff is standing up now and fighting that, combating that. He's got a bunch of deputies out there and they're networking and dealing with the homeless, getting shelter and so forth. But uh, 
again, the public officials that are responsible for that, they've gone into their malfeasance and nonfeasance. They're not doing anything. And the sheriff is on record saying, since they refuse to do anything, it falls on me legally to do something about it because he is a constitutional officer of the state of California for the section of Los Angeles. Skin in the game. Who has skin in the game? Well, the sheriff has a lot of skin in the game because he can't continue arresting people, sending them over to Garcon's shop, and he opens up the door and lets them out the back door. That's not very productive. So the sheriff has a lot of skin in the game. He's also being attacked by his own party. He's a Democrat. And as I read in the article earlier on the podcast, they want him out. Gone. Fuera. So that is alarming. Garçon, his only skin in the game is the $2.2 million that George Soros gave. That investment. But the investment to the community? When I read to you all the police endorsements that his um, competitor in the last election, Jackie Lacey, she had every police organization back her. And this guy's the former cop. Nobody backed him. So... There's nobody in Los Angeles or California policing that doesn't know this guy is a hack, a political hack. Been in uniform. There's a bunch of them out there. There's a bunch of them out there, folks. Oh, we're we're getting a, we're getting closer to their names. There, we'll start taking some masks off from people soon enough. But. The sheriff is standing up for the victims of Los Angeles. Recently, George Chad Garçon has announced that the district attorney's office would not represent victims in parole hearings. Now, traditionally, the district attorney would represent the victims of crimes in parole hearings as these guys were in prison and they were going up for parole. District Attorney would argue vehemently not to release these people. Well, Garcon says we're not doing that anymore. But Sheriff Villanueva has stood up and said, I'm sending Los Angeles Sheriff's Department lawyers to represent the victims. You got to hand it to them. You got to hand it to them. So I'm glad I reserved my comments. Three strikes and you're still in the game with George. Even the three strikes law in California, you know, if you got two felonies, capital felonies, and you do something wrong, number three, you go away for life. Well, God's song has looked the other way on those charges as well. The Beverly Hills City Council has recently voted against Garcon in a no-confidence vote. That doesn't speak well about him. And all victims of crime are again being victimized by Garcon because he's letting them go. He's dropping charges. He's telling his agency of lawyers we're not going to defend the victims in parole uh, you know in these parole hearings and he's vilifying some of the victims as well really going out of his way to be a scumbag so without a doubt this is a battle that we all need to pay attention to I'll be putting some links on the show notes so you can follow along on some of this stuff. It is interesting, but 
I am glad that I reserved any uh, disclosure on Sheriff Alex Villanueva when he first hit the circuit. And even though he was talking, he was on a progressive platform, he didn't look the part and he didn't really talk the part. And that's what made me hold off on saying anything about him. And I'm not saying he's not a liberal. I'm not saying he doesn't have a progressive agenda. He does. But I'm also saying more power to him and to the people of Los Angeles that voted him in. I'm not, I'm not mad at you. What I am happy about is that he's standing up to, to the left. And that's what we need to, to do. He's openly uh, going up against the, uh, the county commission or the Bureau of Supervisors, I believe they call them, in California for the defunding and everything else. And he's going after them politically, and he's hitting hard. Now, Villanueva really has an uphill battle as far as his re-election, not because the people are not going to go out and vote for him, but because we're talking about George Soros money on the other side. We're talking about a communist, corrupt political wing that has engulfed Los Angeles and California for many years. But the bright side of all this is that the general public is tired of it. They're tired of being victimized. They're tired of, of, of having homeless people out in the street urinating, defecating, or whatever they want, do whatever you want, destroying all kinds of places like Venice Beach, San Francisco's another cesspool, Los Angeles, Skid Row, and so forth. And there's no quality of life. Everywhere these Democrats fly their flag, in every city and state in America, it's a freaking cesspool. And for you to stand there or sit there and justify the goodness of the Democratic Party, you're a bigger buffoon than the buffoon that's killing the city and the states. Come on. You know how many innocent people are being hurt because these asses want nothing more than to fly red flags over capitals? This is how sick this whole thing has begun. Began. And and we now look at Garçon, born in Cuba. Family leaves in 67, which is a little, little slow. Little, the paddling didn't happen very fast. Now, there is a lot of documentation with Fidel Castro that are a lot of people that were his supporters. He basically kicked them in the pants and threw them out of the country. The reason being, they were not 100% supporters. They also grease some palms on the other side, just in case. And those just in case people, Fidel got rid of them because if you're disloyal once, you're disloyal again soon enough. So I'm not saying that's the case in the Garçon family, but it sure does smell like it. Now, of course, the name Garçon has a French flair to it, and most likely his ancestors come from the poor South France, North Spain, and ended up in Cuba. So not far-fetched, just learned it the other day from my uncle that my great-grandfather, when uh, his mother was French, and she lived in the south of France and married my great-great-grandfather, which was a Spaniard, 
and then they went to Cuba. So it's not far-fetched. I can understand it. But it's time to stand up for what you believe in. If you have a position and it's a righteous position, law enforcement is being torn apart by these hacks, by these hack chiefs, hack district attorneys, hack commissioners, mayors, what have you. We need, as a society, to start standing up and fighting for our rights. Just not sit there and put up with the shenanigans and the bullshit and say, well, I'm just going to go low-key, fly under the radar because I don't want to start no trouble. No, it's time to start trouble. And uh, peacefully, but it's time to start trouble. I'm not going to give any of them a free pass on anything. Period. If you don't like it, well, F you. So, that's the way it is. So, with that being said, up next, I'm going to read uh, also our uh, upcoming series. Of course, I switched things around to get this show out there. And um, so we got uh, coming up uh, June 20th, episode 228, the attack of Skid Row uh, in California. It's going to be a good episode. It's going to talk about the homeless problem and how Skid Row has now infected the entire state of California. And we're going to talk a little bit about a Los Angeles police officer, which has had enough bullshit over there too. And he's speaking up uh, for those homeless people and uh, some of the shenanigans that are happening over there. June 23rd, episode 229, tactical shooting handgun with Kilo Sierra. June 27th, Episode 230, The Green Light Program. Going to focus on something going on in Miami-Dade and specifically with Miami-Dade County. And uh, is this uh, a good thing or is this pandering? And we'll look at that. And, of course, the last show of the month of June, June 30th, The Candy Store, part of the Wise Guy series in discussing the Lucchese crime family which is going to be our crime family for the remainder of the year and part of next year. And that will be episode 231 as we continue looking at the Lucchese crime family. Got a lot on the agenda, uh, you know, for the remainder of the year. And uh, this in story really interests me with what's happening in California. It is a battleground. Look, these leftist nuts that are doing all this harm to this country in specific states like New York and other states. So it all originated from the nuts in California. And so this battle is so important. Who will win and how they will win. But I've always said it, liberals will stand up eventually understand that their blind loyalty to these leftist nuts is causing the destruction of a nation. And it can not continue. It just can't. So, as always, it is my honor and pleasure to be your host on Radio Cop Podcast. Continue to pray for yourself because without you in the game, we have nothing. Continue to pray for your family, for your community, for the law enforcement agencies that serve you. Most importantly, continue to pray for the United States of America. This is Alpha Mike, and I'm out.